how do we start? How do we begin? How do we, how do we approach uh, shadow work? You may want to start doing it, but you're not quite sure how to, how to go about it. So there's no hard and fast rules as to how to begin shadow work. And now you hear that and you go, oh, come on, give me some rules. Go do this, go do this, go do this. Now everyone's different. So everyone's going to approach it from a different angle, from a different way. Some are more artistic, others are more analytical. So it, it's just how you approach things and how your mind works and how you, how you process things. A lot of people like to start in childhood also, but that may not work for others. Many shadows are, are born in adulthood as well. It's not all, it happened to me in my childhood or my mother was like this and that's why I'm like this. It's not always like that. Sometimes shadows are born in recent times. And it may be easier just to start off with going through some of those things that are a little bit closer in the timeline to, to the present day. So going through those, just pulling them apart, checking them out. Pick a spot and get started. That is the main thing. Just get started. And remember, it's an ongoing process. So it's not going to happen in a workshop, a, a, a three-day weekend workshop, and I've done my shadow work, I'm done. Um, or um, I've just done a little bit of shadow work on Tuesday, and yeah, I'm finished, I'm done with my shadow work. It doesn't work that way. It's an ongoing process, and it is, like I've said in many other videos, it is pulling out the layers, finding out how you work, and why you react in certain ways. And that may come down to certain things that happened in your childhood, or it may happen that you know, last year something happened and it created a shadow within you, and now you have to deal with that. Now, if the idea of shadow work fills you with absolute blinding terror, then I think it may be a case of you need to start slowly work through and find out what it is about shadow work that makes you so terrified. Um, start working on that first before you start diving into what happened in your childhood maybe. You need to, it's a slow process of just taking it one step at a time. Shadow work should fill you with a little bit of trepidation, a little bit of uh, butterflies in the stomach, but it shouldn't bring fear into your heart of, oh my God, absolute terror of the, of the monster. You shouldn't be afraid of your monsters. You should be shedding light onto your monsters and uh, bringing them into yourself, integrating them into yourself, like we've talked about before in, in previous videos. So it's about getting out of your comfort zone. It's about exploring. It's gonna be painful, it's gonna be uncomfortable, but that's how growth happens. Growth does not happen in comfort. You need to pick apart the layers, you need to examine, you need to find out why, oh, why do I react like that? And that's going to be confronting. And that's not things, that, that's not certain things that people actually want to do a lot. Shadow work is hard and confronting, and many people don't want to be confronted by the truth of themselves. Now we need to prepare. So with anything that you do, you need to have some preparation beforehand. So uh, allotting some time, saying to yourself and committing to yourself, I'm going to do an hour to two hours of shadow work a night for the next two weeks. Okay, and you commit to doing that. You go through that process. Even if it's hard, even if it's like, oh, I don't feel like doing it today. I had a hard day at work. Like, you go through, you go through that process, you do it. It might be a little bit hard to start off with, but then once you're immersed in that, it's quite cathartic. But you need to commit to that time. Once that, that two-week uh, two walk is done, then relax. Don't keep picking away, keep picking away. You need to give yourself time to assimilate all the things that you've learned about yourself in that two-week period. You need to assimilate that into yourself. You need to uh, relax and, and digest and process. And that's not gonna happen if you're continually picking away, continually picking away, pick, 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 pick. You don't have a chance to actually really heal. You're always picking, you're always picking. 
it's similar to when you're working a muscle. You're at the gym and you're working your muscle and, you're, and, it, and it becomes fatigued because you're working it, working it, working it. You need that time, that couple of days, to relax and let that muscle grow and become stronger. And that only happens when you relax, when you rest. If you continue to go back to the gym the next day and work the same muscle over and over and over and over again, what you do is you end up stripping away and making less and making it weaker than if you are building it up. So it's a similar thing with, with shadow work. You don't want to keep picking away, picking away until you have this raw, exposed, weeping sore that just never gets well. You're just continually picking at yourself. So give yourself a chance to assimilate the shadow into yourself. Can we do this? What are some of the techniques? What are some of the ways? Well, there are quite a few. One uh, many people like to do is like a meditation. So you can do almost like a guided meditation for yourself or think about a certain, um, certain time and just meditate on that uh, for a while. Uh, let's say there's a, a certain scenario that you have where you had an argument with your father, let's say. Um, and you look at that argument again from the first person and you feel how you felt, you go through, you go through those emotions, you go through that whole scenario. Once you've done that and you've, you understand it from one point of view, then you take yourself outside of yourself and look at it as if you're an objective observer. You are almost a fly on the wall looking at the scene from a different vantage point. Without that emotion that you have of being in that first person, you have that objective reality where you're just observing, you're just looking, and you can see things that you cannot always see when you are immersed in that, in that first person. So you've got that objectivity. And look again at that scene and see how it is between the person that you are and the person that you're having, say, the, the, the uh, argument with. And, and work out those dynamics as well. And then once you've got that information, then assimilate it and process it into yourself. There's journaling. Many people love to write and journaling is one of those things. Just getting in there and just pouring your thoughts out just writing and writing and writing and writing. You don't have to have any specific purpose. You may have a, a one idea, but you just flow through and let that go. And you, where you started is not gonna be where you, where you end up. You can find out things about yourself that you thought, oh, where did that come from? So that's a nice way of doing it, journaling. A lot of people are, are, are very immersed in, in the words. Um, and if that's you, then journaling can be a, a great asset. There is art, art therapy. So you can draw, you can sculpt, you can, you can do all manner of things just to help to, to get that information out, to help to, to flow. You can draw a, paint, uh, draw a painting. You can paint a painting or draw a drawing about a certain scene, about a feeling, about, about something that, that happened or a scenario. Um, you can also use collage and that can help out in the journaling process as you can write in, in your journal but you can also add images and pictures and, and have more of a collage, um, taking things out of magazines and words and things that, that will help to spur that, 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 uh, that idea or that emotion that you have and help to, to just get in underneath. Um, images work very well in your subconscious. Your subconscious works a lot better with, with images than it does with words. So if that is you and you are more of an image-based person, then collaging and art is, is a wonderful way of doing that and really getting in there and, and, and working out different scenarios. We also have what's called mapping. So if, you wanna, if you're a visual person again and you wanna try and work out, okay, well how does this relate to that? And how does that scenario relate to how I'm feeling about this? So if you've seen those um, CSI uh, crime scene investigation type uh, shows, and you see the wall where they're going, all right, well, this is uh, subject A, and the subject A went here, 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 and then this is how this relates, this person um, relates to this person. And they've got little pictures, and they've got string, and they've got all these things that are connecting bits and pieces together. 
and you can find out how one emotion or how one situation relates to X, Y and Z in your life. And it's a visual way of, of working out how, almost how your brain works and how uh, things that happen in your life impact on other things that happen in your life and how they're all in interconnected. It's not just one little piece that brings everything into focus. It could be quite a few little different pieces that once put together then bring everything into focus. So mapping is another way of, of doing that and looking into that. And you can use that with the meditation, with the journaling and with the art and the collage, bringing it all together in that mapping process. Um, is, is a nice way of doing that. Using colour, using um, visuals, all those things to help trigger different parts of your brain, different parts of your subconscious. Now, lastly, the main thing is don't force anything, okay? If something is just not in you, oh, I've got to get in there and I've got to rip it apart, don't force it. It should be natural, it should be organic, it should be something that that um, just flows out of you. And some days it's going to be a little harder than others. Some You're going to be resistant to certain things than you are to others. So just take it different ways. Just look at, look at one scenario, maybe one day, and then look at something else that you think is completely random. That after a while you may end up finding it's just another side of the same scenario that you were looking at the day before. Just looking at it from a different angle. So just slowly pick away take your time and enjoy the process in a way. I know it sounds a little bit, uh, a bit, a bit weird, but enjoying the process of picking at yourself and looking at yourself. Um, but it can be a cathartic, it can be a, a very enlightening um, and rewarding experience. One last thing, when you've had a revelation, and you've gone through the process and you've uh, assimilated something into, your, into yourself and you've integrated that shadow part into yourself. Down the track, another scenario will come up along and it will bring you straight back into that shadow that you thought that you had integrated into yourself. Now, that's going to happen. You're going to, it's almost like your, your subconscious or the, or the universe is testing you and going, okay, well, you've done this work, let's see how you did, let's see how you went, um, how, how well have you integrated that into yourself. Um, and it is a similar pattern coming through again and again and again. Now, depending on how you react and how you go through that, depends on how much work you've done. So you think of life as a spiral. So if you're looking at it from the, from, um, from the top and you just see a circle around and around and around, you think you're just going around and around the same circle, a uh, big merry-go-round of doom, okay? But if you look at it from a different angle, you're looking at it from the side, you can see that it's actually a spiral, spiraling around and around and around. Now we can evolve and go up the spiral or we can devolve and go down the spiral. And how we react when we get back to that spot where that same scenario is enacted means whether we've evolved and we're looking at it from a more enlightened view, a more uh, balanced view, or we've devolved. Well, I hope that helped. And uh, we'll be walking through the shadow a little bit more as we go. Every now and again, I'll, I'll pop in a, another video just to, just to help along. But this is just a few techniques to, to help get you started. Don't be afraid. It will be a bit of a struggle, but anything that's worth doing is worth doing with a little bit of struggle. If it's handed to you, then it's not worth as much. Absolutely. Enlightened being, I'm spiritual and I just stay in the light, then it means that you are avoiding the shadows, you're avoiding the dark, you're avoiding a part of yourself.